Yes. You ready to do a video? Yeah. All right. This is Amy and Creed. Creed is two, so we'll see how long he lasts, but he really wants to be in this video. So we're here to talk to you today about large family packing for an extended vacation. We're taking our annual vacation to the mountains. We are gone about 10 to 14 days when we do go. And we have a certain method that we follow to pack. <laughs> and so I want to share that with you today because it will work for any family size. And it's, it's worked really well for us. We actually travel a lot. And we travel for short distances and we travel for long distances. So I've pretty much made this an art. So what we do is we start by doing up all the laundry in the house as much as we possibly can. So we end up working for several days to make sure that we have all the laundry done. We sort it. Everybody puts their laundry away. Now some people would think that's a little crazy since we're going to be packing. Why don't we just pack as we get it out of the dryer? But that feels too confusing to me. So I have everybody put all their stuff away so that I am pulling from clean clothes in a closet in drawers and I feel like I have a better handle of exactly what I have and what I don't have. So once I have all the laundry done up and it's in the closets and drawers, I figure up exactly how many outfits I'm going to need for vacation. Bye. And um, that depends on whether I can do laundry or not. For a weekend trip where we're not going to be doing laundry, you know, I'll need two to three outfits and a pair of jammies. And that's all I need. For a longer trip like this is going to be, and I'm able to do laundry, I think I can get by with about seven outfits, a couple of pairs of jammies, and all the under things and hair stuff and all of that that I need to get by for that time period. So I write that down and I announce it to all the kids who are able to pack themselves. And in this case, that would be everyone nine and up in our household. So that's four kids who are able to pack themselves and then four children who are not able to pack themselves. So I announce that to everybody and I send them off to pull from their drawers and their closets and figure out what they need. And then I go and I pull down the bags that I need to like the duffel bags and the backpacks and things like that to pack the little boys in Aspen. I try to pack as many people into one bag as I can but a long extended trip like this I'm not going to be able to do that. A short weekend trip I can get all the little boys, the three little boys into one bag and then I put like diapers and things like that into a separate bag and usually put Aspen's things in there. However, a long trip like this, pretty much everybody's going to need their own bag because I need about seven outfits. Um, when I say seven outfits, I don't mean seven pairs of pants and seven shirts. I mean you can get by with using about four pairs of pants and a, you know six to seven shirts. We usually tend to be able to use the pants a little bit longer um, than we can the shirts. The shirts tend to get pretty dirty. So I'll send the big kids off to take care of their packing and they do all of that in their rooms and then they leave those bags in their rooms because later on I'm going to come and check over those bags. So I'm over taking care of the little boys and as I figure out what I've got, I'm also making notes of the things that either haven't come through the wash yet because there's always that one last load that we have to do and it almost always has something in it that I needed to pack. So I make a note like one pair of jeans is missing. I need two pairs of socks for this child. And so I just on a piece of paper I just all, jot all that down and I leave that piece of paper out where I can see it easily. As the laundry comes through I can put those things into the bag to finish them up. As soon as a bag is completely finished it goes out to a staging area. Currently in this house, our staging area is the living room by the big couch. We have a big U-shaped couch, and I just start packing all the bags right there. It's not too far from the front door, and so I'll start stacking everything that can go there. Anything that's going to go there, like a cooler even is going to, we're going to put there as soon as that cooler's ready, as soon as their strollers are out, we'll put them there, uh, diaper bags, anything, that's our staging area. So that way I know those things that are there are completely finished. Always take one or two laundry bags. You, they're the mesh bags that you buy at Walmart. You just throw clothes in there. You can stage an area wherever you're staying 
as the laundry area and you can every night when you get done with those clothes you know just throw them in there it makes it much easier for washing I've also found if you do have the opportunity to wash there are these wonderful little wash strips and I will try to put a link to that in the post there's these wash strips and they are they're basically like paper almost they dissolve in your washing machine and so it makes it where you're not taking liquid detergent or dry detergent and that could potentially make a mess it's also it lays very flat so it's great to take on trips and so I'll, I'll link to that in the post um, so we also bring food. We have a very small cooler that we put into the van with us. We also have um, cloth sacks that we fill with snacks. And then we've also found that you want to take water. We'll take water jugs and sometimes water bottles, but I prefer to just do jugs. But we found that you don't really want to give the kids juice or soda or something like that on a long trip because the sugar content in those drinks actually makes us have to stop even more than we already do for bathroom breaks. And there were times when we would stop at one end of a town and by the time we got to the other end of the town, we had children who needed to go again. So if you take water, it seems to stop that problem. So we have gone to just bringing water for the kids. A few other things that we take are the toothbrushes. We roll those up in a towel that I've made that's specifically for that purpose. There's slots for the toothbrushes to go in. There's a big slot for a travel toothpaste, a travel mouthwash, and some dental floss to go into. We gather up everybody's toothbrushes once they've brushed for that day, and we roll them all up, and they usually go into my bag. Another thing that we take are paper towels and plastic sacks. It's just something that we found to be extremely helpful to have on vacation with us. You never know when there's gonna be a spill, or you're gonna to need to bag up something and throw it out. We have a van seating chart to kind of help with any squabbles that there might be over she's sitting in my seat and such and such. You know, everything's planned out. There's about six different plans, then we just rotate each day we're in the van. They change up seats, except for the two little ones who are in car seats. And we, we sing as we're traveling down the road. We talk. We listen to music. Um, the children read. Sometimes I read aloud, too. It really has become just an enjoyable part of our family life. And I hope by taking some of these tips that you'll also find traveling with your family to be enjoyable as well.